Hi everyone, my name is Bhavesh and I teach all sorts of MicroPython secrets and tips. Today is going to be fairly short, but we're going to learn a very cool advanced skill, which is learning how to run MicroPython inside a Docker container. Now, before I show you how to do that, you might be wondering, like, why do you want to run MicroPython inside a Docker container? And there's multiple reasons, and I, there's three main ones that I think are pretty cool. And the first one, of course, is that you get to run your MicroPython code and test it out without actually having to run it on real hardware. So say you're doing a project, you're waiting for the hardware to arrive, you can already start coding on your own laptop before, before your project even arrives. Uh, the second reason is so that you can test your MicroPython code against different versions of MicroPython. So for some reason, if you need to run your code uh, and it needs to work on both MicroPython 1.18 and 1.16, maybe because you want to deploy to different hardware, uh, you can do that because there's different Docker containers for each of those versions. And the last reason is that in case you want to run unit tests, so say you have like a really long, big library or you're doing some complicated work and you have lots of unit tests to, to make sure that you never break the code with every new change, you can actually do that in your Docker container and you don't need to, again, run your tests on real hardware. So these are the three of the kind of main reasons why you need to be able to do this. And it is good for much larger and more advanced projects. Without further ado, let's get into it. Let me show you how to do that. So head on over to Docker Hub. So that's hub.docker.com. And if you search for MicroPython, one of the first things that comes up is MicroPython slash Unix, this one. And uh, it's by MicroPython. And there's not much information available here, but what happens is if you go down to the tag section, you see that there's a bunch of different versions. So 1.18, 1.17, 5 and 6, 16. So we have four versions there. And uh, the work that's been done here to push these to Docker is done by the amazing Matt Trentini over here. So kudos to him. Thank you so much. Basically, you want to be able to pull one of these versions. So let's, for today, since 1.18 is the latest as of the time of this video, let's pull 1.18. I'm going to open up a terminal and make sure, first of all, that Docker is running up here. That's what it looks like on Mac OS. On Windows, it looks different, but the concept's the same. So we are going to run that container, MicroPython container. Now, this is a very long command, so I have saved it from before. Um, and let me just quickly explain what all these different parts of the command mean. So first off, we have Docker run. This means uh, give me an interactive terminal once you run it. So that's IT. This is the name of the container. So I've called it MicroPython latest because I'm pulling the latest. But let's say if you want to pull a specific version, like 1.18, whoops, you can do that instead. So you can say, I want to pull 1.18 specifically and freeze it there. And then you can give it a name that is easy for you to remember, which in my case is MicroPython 1.18. This parameter here, network equals host, gives you access to the network on your laptop. So you can actually pull and push things from the internet. And since a lot of MicroPython code doesn't interact with the web, I tend to always leave this option on. This one is for volume mounting. So basically, if you want to be able to access your code on your local folder on your laptop from the MicroPython environment in Docker, you need to mount it in there. And it's very simple. You do a mount, type equals bind. And then the source is the folder where your code is. So all of my code is in this folder called code. And then the target, I just put it in the home folder inside the Docker so that you can access it right away when you get in. Lastly, there's entry point bash, which just means that once this Docker container runs, I want it to take me into a bash terminal so I can start coding or I can start messing around on the command line. And then finally, this is the actual Docker container name and version as they are on Docker Hub. So this, this is straight, straight out of Docker Hub, which you can see over here. 1.18 from the package MicroPython Unix. Cool. So that's a very long command. Save it. It's much easier to save it instead of remembering it. I'm going to hit enter there. Awesome. OK. It just worked right away. And the reason for this is because I already had the image downloaded. For you, it might do a few download steps and then show you this, this page here. So now we're in the home directory. 
if I do an LS in there, you can see all of these crazy projects that I work on. And this is actually just my project folder. So if I open my project folder here, um, this is exactly the folders that are available over here. So that's pretty cool. If we want to run MicroPython like a REPL, we just type in the MicroPython dev command and you have a REPL here. So we can actually do stuff like print hello. And that works, which is interesting, but not that cool because obviously you want to run files, right? So I've prepared a little example program here. So I'm going to, it's called MicroPython ISS orbital params. And I have a main.py in there. Let me quickly show you what that main.py does. It's a, it's just a quick example. So I'm just importing U requests and I'm getting this website, which gives you the orbital parameters of the international space station in just uh, three lines of text. And I'm just printing that out, right? So let's try to run that. Let's see if that works. So I'm going to say micropython dev main.py. Okay. So. Here's an interesting one, no module named U requests. So usually when you code on say an ESP32, the ESP32 port of MicroPython actually comes packaged with a lot of the utility modules that you need for web development, right? But in the MicroPython Docker, we don't have that. Luckily, there's a very simple way to get those. We just use pip or upip specifically. So let me just clear that screen. So we're gonna go MicroPython dev, invoke the module upip. So if you're used to pip install, this is very similar to that. And you can do install u requests. So we can make that module work. Okay, and that's it, that's done. So let's try that again. So let's run main.py. There you go, awesome. Okay, and that's the orbital parameters of the International Space Station. Obviously this is not very useful until you put it through a bunch of calculations to see where it actually is in space right now. But that's pretty cool, right? So there you have it. MicroPython on Docker, on your computer. You can work on it before you ever order any hardware. You can run unit tests on it. And I think it's a great tool to have in your toolkit for when you're running advanced projects and want to test out things before you run them on real hardware. Oh, I almost forgot. Please, please do subscribe and follow down below or on my website, bhave.sh, link is below, where I do written article versions of my video tutorials, whichever you prefer. It really helps me reach out to more nerds like yourself who are trying to do cool home projects or learn more about MicroPython, but also really helps you because I get feedback from you and ideas of what videos to make and what topics to teach. And so it's a win-win situation. So I'm really looking forward to you joining the community. Thanks very much. Till next time. Bye-bye.